Hi guys, Nat here with February's Tea Towel Topper. Um, I know I'm a little bit late for Valentine's Day. I've been a bit unwell. Anywho, um, I've used this beautiful rainbow, little love heart rainbow, and I'm actually going to use it as an iron-on. So it's a bit of an easier project this this month. And so here's the iron-on, and then I've, I've created an offset, which I've called the cotton topping. So that one's cotton. The next layer is for the batting, and then that's the fabric loop to make the loop, and then there's uh, the fabric backing. Now when we centre that all up together, you can see that the iron-on is... Um, in a little bit it gives you a seam allowance on the white but it also shows the shape so if you want to change shape size so if you want to change the size you would do it at that point as well now we'll take you over to the mat screen because I want to show you just how to so we are definitely cutting them on the mat but how to make it so it cuts on the larger fabric mat which just makes it a little bit easier for us to um, get the most use out of our fabric especially if we're going down to um, spotlight or our fabric shop and buying 30 centimeters by width of fabric so there's only two fabric ones to cut out today the cotton and the batting and then the rest is iron on so I'm going to click over to the machine and we'll get it ready to cut okay now Cricut design space is all set up I'm going to smooth down this fabric and we can see here I've got a little bit too much and normally I don't worry about that sort of thing but this one was a little bit too much you could see it sort of bubbled over at the edge and it's caused a little bit of a problem which I'll point out in a little bit. Um, ideally you want it to be the 30 centimetres by 30 centimetres but often when you go to the shop and they cut it they'll cut a little bit larger so that you get your proper 30 centimetres. Um, I, I should have been a bit more careful and not um, so hasty and had it cut properly but it, it's cut fine you can just see that because it's got the little overhang um, and then here we go you've got the little arrow um, if I'd have set it up properly it would have been fine next up we've got the batting and I'm actually going to lay this one down and cut it uh, to proper size once bit and twice so you'd assume that I'd have figured this out earlier but um, yeah little mistakes are how we learn anywho I'm gonna trim this down to size and I'll cut it on the batting setting uh, for Cricut Cricut has a batting setting this is actually bamboo batting um, and, and I love working with it it's it's just lovely to work with but it does leave a little bit of a mess at the end of the cut so we'll use some sugar soap wipes when we finish up and we'll just tidy up our mat then Okay, so I'm going to use the sugar soap wipes just to clean up. You can see where it's left a bit of a mess. I'm not doing it rough or hard. I just a light little scrub over the top. The little dots that are on these sugar soap wipes just pick up that fluff really, really well. I love sugar soap wipes. And then I'll leave that to dry before I put my protective film back on top. And then we can go and pin our pieces together. Okay, now we've got our pieces cut out, we're going to take our cotton pieces and put them together right sides facing and then we're going to layer those on top of our batting piece and then we're going to just clip those together. We're not going to sew this one straight away because we've got to do our loop first. Okay, to make our loop we're going to take our rectangle piece, find the right side of the fabric and we're going to fold the right side of the fabrics together lengthways um, so that they're, they're facing each other and then we're going to open that, just a little finger seam, open that up and then we'll fold our fabrics in the other way so that when we fold it all over we almost made a bias binding and the right side of the fabric will be out this only matters if you're using a, a like a textured I'm using a slightly textured white um, so right sides wrong sides it, it matters here if you're using a prima homespun white doesn't matter you can use either side of the white it's the same okay so we're going to sew straight down that seam and then come back with our little hoop and then we'll clip it into our rainbow Okay, now that we've sewn our piece and we've just sewn one seam, we're going to make our little loop. So I'm just going to tack this together with a, a clip and then I'm going to pop it in to between the two layers of the cotton. Now I have to apologise because when I made this I um, was not feeling at all well. In fact, February has been a washout with me, endometriosis. Um, sucks but what can you do and I should have actually measured out the center of my uh, rainbow because uh, when you come to see it later you'll see that I've actually not got it right on the center but my toddler won't mind so I'm just pinning this back in so that the little loop is between the two cotton layers and then I'm going to sew right around the outside just up that side and all the way down the bottom leaving the very bottom line empty and don't sew that that's where we've got to put our towel 
Okay, so I've sewn around that and I've actually trimmed my edges just a little bit closer, not too close, I didn't want to cut my stitches, and then I'm going to turn that inside out and then I am going to iron that flat. I'm actually using my mini press on heat set 2 and uh, that's the medium setting and then I am going to measure my piece out and double check my rainbow on the Cricut Design Space just to make sure that I haven't done too big a seam allowance and make sure that my rainbow will fit and then we'll adjust that and then we'll cut out our iron pieces. For the iron colours I have um, chosen to use, this is the darker, it doesn't show up so well on the camera but it's actually the raspberry, this is party pink and then the lighter blue that's next to this is actually from the Miami sampler and then I got this sampler from Domain um, here in Australia and it was $12.95, it was on sale because it's a, a Martha Stewart one and I don't think they're making them anymore, they're not available so much anymore here in Australia. This one's called the Seaside sampler so I've taken the light blue from the Miami sampler and I think I'm going to take the light blue from the seaside sampler and put those two together for a sort of a sea theme and then I'm going to get those sorted out on design space so that I have the right colours and then I'll cut them out. Okay so I have told Cricut which colours I'm using and that makes my matte um, when I slide the mats in there nice and easy. I've actually moved some of the pieces around so that I can cut them in the right um, using getting the most out of my materials and then I'm going to weed those out. I just love how easy Cricut makes these sort of things and you can see here I'm not being fancy with my mats and I'm just going back to the mat screen on design space and then adjusting where I want my image because this is a brand new mat and it was really really sticky so I was just like nope it's it's down there I'm going to cut it out the way it is and just adjust where the picture is sitting. Okie dokie so once these are all cut out we'll weed them and then we'll go and we'll iron them up. Okay, so I've actually got my bright pad out and I know that you guys probably can't see it so well but it's made it a lot easier for me um, to be able to cut it out. I'm um, at this point in when I was doing this I was struggling with some um, headaches as well so I adjusted the line on my bright pad and um, got the right setting for me so that I could, could see it and I could weed out the pieces that I wanted and also be able to um, save some of those pieces that weren't used which I'll keep in my scrap. Um, scrap vinyls for for later I have a, a lot of things I can do with those small scraps even things like labeling you know children's school clothes um, even sometimes when you just need an initial or you just need to pop in like the year that they're in um, just those little extra bits my kids they don't care about you know having those sort of things in different colors okay so now we've got it all done I'm going to use my heat press on the heat press set 2 because that's the heat press guide set to do and I'm going to iron these on and layer them up okay I love how easy this works okay so you'll see here I actually keep the uh, larger piece of the um, iron on just to protect the rest of the pieces as I'm layering them up I just keep putting that back on top so this one here is the largest piece and it just works so lovely and I just think this worked out really really lovely I love how soft the iron on is on top of the fabric as well okay we'll finish up the iron on and then we'll move on to getting our towel ready to go inside Okie dokie, so next up we've got the towel. I'm going to put a running stitch um, for, for folding my towel in half, then putting a running stitch across the top there. And I'm just going to cinch it in until it's the right size to fit inside my um, opening there from the top of my rainbow. I'm actually going to cut off where it folds over as well, just because I don't need that extra bulk. Um, and then I'll just snip that out. Okie dokie, so next up we're going to make sure this fits inside, I'm just going to open up the flap, pop it inside and check that it's going to fit and that I am going to have a, a bit of a seam allowance so that I can close up that bottom part over my towel and sew that across that. So we'll just do that, make sure we can do that and get that quarter inch or at least a little bit of a seam and then we will move on to the next step which will be to trim um, a bit of the batting. Because this is quite a plushy towel I need to actually trim some of the batting out of 
the top piece so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip some of the trim, uh, some of the batting and then just take to it with some scissors and cut it um, just so that I don't have extra bulk to go around that towel which would put extra pressure on my sewing machine but also make the towel not sit properly okay now that I've trimmed that I'm going to iron my little seam under so it is quite a small seam six mil or a quarter of an inch seams not not a very big seam at all I'm just going to carefully pop it over and then iron it down when I go to do the front which has got the rainbow the iron on rainbow on the front I'm going to cover up my rainbow with a piece of paper just so that I don't tarnish or or melt any of that vinyl to the bottom of my little iron okay next up is to pop my towel in and to pin it in place so that I can sew across that seam and fix the towel to the topper okay so now that's all sewed together um, I'm quite happy with that and because my towel is polyester I can actually infuse um, with some infusible ink into the towel so I'm going to grab some infusible ink if you've got a cotton towel um, you can't use the infusible ink on that one uh, but then your towel is probably going to be better for um, drying hands than this one because polyester is not an incredibly wicking fabric is it <laughs> but I'm going to use this infusible ink and I'm going to pop on some little love hearts and a squiggle just sort of to carry that seam right through okay so when we have a look at what we get in the infusible ink box we see that the packaging um, it's in it's in a black poly bag and the reason for that is that it's a uv sensitive product so it will start to deteriorate in the sun so be careful how you store this one um, i like to store it back in the bag and then back in the box you also get a little like a warning ticket i think it says to make sure that you're using it in a well ventilated space and you get some sample fabrics so that you can give it a try um, and some butcher's paper so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the pink sheet from this set so this sheet this set actually had two sheets in it I'm going to pop them out on my Cricut mat and then I'm going to pop them through the machine and do a row of hearts and a squiggly line so that I can pop them onto my towel and then once that's done we'll be back Okie dokie, I've got these cut out. I ended up weeding them off screen. I'm not quite sure what happened to that footage. Sorry about that. But um, we've got them and what I'm going to do is I'm going to line them up. So with infusible ink, because it is a dye that you're essentially, um, the heat activates the little dye and it penetrates the polyester fibres. So I'm going to pop a piece of paper underneath my project and a piece of paper over the top of my project. When you have a look at the Cricut Heat Press Guide, it'll, it'll let you know. Uh, what to do as well so there's butcher's paper that comes in the packet too so you don't need to go and find any of that if you don't need to but of course any paper is fine uh, except for newspaper don't use newspaper or you'll end up um, transferring print the mini press you need it on set three to do the infusible ink and then you can go and start ironing and try not to move it about too much while you're um, pressing because you can end up getting ghosting with the infusible ink so you just want to do nice even strokes with the mini press the obviously the bigger presses the auto press the easy presses they're a bit bigger and you would just pop those down and then pick it back up okay once we've pressed it for the required time we can go ahead and start to peel that up you want to peel this once it's cooled down a little bit you don't want to peel it while it's hot or you can get that ghosting too ghosting just means that when you've peeled it up and you've popped it back down or when you've moved it a little bit the the color sort of shifts now we can see when this one pulls up that the uh, infusible ink material itself actually um, had no color left in it so that means all the color has transferred over to my infusible ink pieces and I'm just fluffing up the towel at the moment just to make sure that it doesn't look too too flattened sometimes those polyester fibers they can they can flatten and look quite um, squished after that but a little bit of fluffing up and I don't think that looks too bad now we'll do this little love heart and reveal that and we can see here I'm just sort of just gently peeling it up at the moment just because I don't want to if it's not set enough I don't want to pull up all of them but we can see there all of the um, 
all of the ink was off the paper. The paper looks nice and clean and, and white. There's not a lot of colour still left on the paper. And then I can scruff up this part. Or I could just iron the rest of the towel so it doesn't look like there's that sort of division. But I think that looks pretty good from here. Now, when you're looking at fluffy items like this, you are dyeing just the fluffy fibres. So it doesn't dye all the way to the base of quite thick plushy pile uh, but when you're doing things like um, t-shirts you need to put the um, the paper underneath it for sure because you can get uh, some ink sort of bleed through and then it ends up on your on your, your easy press mats and things like that and depending on the type of easy press mat you have you can end up staining that okay so that's our finished project our finished little towel for february and i'm sorry that it's being posted in march it's been a, a big month um, but it's finished and i'm going to start making the march one before it turns into april <laughs> have a lovely afternoon guys bye